Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you from within the enigma of combination, I'll be your co-host Dave Drumbore. Joining me as always, my Hasbro and co-host, Sean Paul Ellis. <laughs> How's it going, Hasbro? Uh, David, David, David. I'm doing well, buddy. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad we're forming this coalition of the Hasbros over here. Nice, nice. Everybody's a, has- Everybody's a Hasbro. You got your popped Hasbro robot collar. That's right. Um, you know. That's it. That's, Has- all, that's all you need to be. <laughs> that's all Hasbros. you need. That's all you popped need to be Hasbro. robot collar. You know, everybody's got to turn into a monster truck. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Or just be like a regular human and just pretend to be a robot. It's fine. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Evil monster or pretend robot human. Whatever. Hasbro. <laughs> if we take all kinds and shapes here. Look, what, what Dave is trying to say yeah. is that if you want to be a Hasbro, mm-hmm. it's an all-inclusive thing. You can just, you're in. If you think you're a Hasbro, you're, you're a Hasbro, bro. You don't have to fill out an application. You don't have to prove anything to us. If you if you've got Hasbro spirit, then you're one of the Hasbros. And we appreciate welcome. you. And we welcome you to the club. Welcome to being a Hasbro, bro. And honestly, if you've been sticking with us for the last few weeks here on uh, Hasbro's month, <laughs> otherwise known as Transformers month, you know, more power to you. We're, we're struggling. Dude, I, don't e- I don't even know how we're sticking with this. <laughs> well, we got one I more don't even covered. know how we're sticking with this. We got one more, and this is the one that kind of started the whole thing. So this is like the most brand newest, <laughs> hasbro thing it could possibly be. We're talking Transformers Combiner Wars tonight. It, it is, we are currently like smack dab in the middle of the first ever debut season of this show because it is a uh, kind of a special digital series it's on a platform called go 90 if you're outside of america you can also find it on machinima's youtube page and you can probably find it uh various other places as well but it's kind of cool they're these short about five minute episode series there's only going to be seven of them we're about halfway through them right now so tonight on tonight's episode we're going to talk about the first four you guys still have time to get caught up watch those first four and then you can continue with us as we finish out the season but I saw that this was coming up. It debuted uh, earlier this month, which we'll talk about. And I just thought it'd be cool to revisit some of the crazier Transformers things. I mean, we started with, what, G1 in the first week? Yeah. And then we just went nuts. Went, As a personal aside for yeah. any listeners, what happens when we schedule this show <laughs> yeah. is that we come up with these ideas. And originally, for anybody who's really, really interested in the behind the scenes, August, we were like, let's do Dog Days of Summer and do all the shows that have dogs prominently featured. That was and Sean's was idea, like, and it was a good one. And Dave just goes, there's a Transformers series. <laughs> and we were like, oh, shit, yeah. what is going on? Here's, He's the, like, here's yep. the problem when it's only like me and Sean mostly making decisions. <laughs> if the other person doesn't say, no, that's a terrible idea, then we just go for it. And that, sometimes it works great, and sometimes it's Transformers month. But no, this has been fun this month because we've watched some just like crazy batshit head on pretender stuff, like weird stuff from oh, Japan that man. we've never seen. We got to revisit some cool stuff with our buddy Neil Kaplan. That was fun. Um, so I- I'm glad we did this month. Um, we can definitely do, you know, Dog Days of Summer another time. There's guys, listen, there's plenty of cartoons that are still out there. We are well aware of how many we have not covered yet. So we'll, we'll get there. Don't you worry. I learned a lot. I feel like I learned, a, learned lot a lot from this month. And we, I learned we, a lot. We grew closer together in our has brotherhood. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Nothing, nothing helps solidify or codify that brotherhood like having a mutual enemy, which has been the show yeah, Transformers that we talk about for an hour every week. Jesus. Speaking of, so Sean's going to get you guys <laughs> caught up with the latest and greatest on this current series, which I said is this might now be the most current thing we've covered because we've we've covered Voltron before, but that was like that was out. We watched it and it was out that current weekend on netflix this one is still like in the process of being released so we're literally in the middle of a series of the first season here so kind of cool the the only way that we can get further down the rabbit hole in this (laughs) is if we find somebody who's actually in the process of writing and producing a cartoon show just break into their office yeah yeah and we report and steal everything that they have for that intellectual property and then report on how that show is is going in terms of production how it's gonna be eventually Exactly. And the only thing that's even more advanced than that is if we eventually produce and make something ourselves. And then we can right. tell you about it for the three years it'll take to make one trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So get ready. Uh, well, let me get into a little bit of history for sure. this. So Transformers Combiner Wars is an animated web series that's co-produced by Machinima and Hasbro Studios with animation done by Tatsunoko Productions. It's targeted at older audiences and ties into the concurrent Combiner Wars imprint. 
The seven-episode series debuted August 2nd on the Go90 platform in the United States and on Machinima's YouTube channel elsewhere, and it's currently ongoing. Yeah, so honestly, not a whole lot of history, not a lot of like crazy production stories, not a lot we can really talk about. I mean, if you guys have been following the IDW comics, then you should kind of have an idea. Um, for this series, they did actually release four prequel episodes, which we'll talk about briefly, because uh, they kind of like get you caught up if you haven't been following the Combiner Wars story, if you're not familiar with what that's all about, and I wasn't when I first got into this. So the prequel, the preludes, as they call them, actually uh, were, were pretty useful, because this series just kind of throws you into the middle of stuff. They hold your hand for a little bit towards the major plot points, but right from the get-go, they throw you into it. So Dave, if I'm not familiar with this, how do I get familiar with it? Well, Give me the lowdown. Let's start with the synopsis here. So, Transformers Combiner Wars. It is set 40 years after the conclusion of the Great War on Earth. The Autobots and Decepticons are no more, and Optimus Prime and Megatron are relics of the past. So wrap your head around that, that the two like main good and bad guy that pretty much all the series, except for the crazy Japanese ones, uh, have been built around. These guys are now like exiled. They're, they're relegated to the corner. Cybertron is at last at peace, ruled by the triumvirate of Starscream. Yes, you heard me correctly, Starscream. Yep. Rodimus Prime and the Mistress of Flame. However, the enigma of combination, an ancient artifact of Primus, has triggered new conflict through the creation of huge, dangerous combiners, and now Cybertron's fragile peace is in danger of collapse. So basically, they wrapped up one war 40 years later. They got another war, except they have much larger robots to contend with. Uh, the, the combiners <laughs> are built of multiple Autobots and Decepticons that all just form into larger bots. So like if you know Devastator built from all the Constructicons, uh, that's a really good example of a combiner. We talked about recently uh, the Seacons with Tentakill yes. and all of the additional drone robots that they have that form and combine into a larger robot called Poseidon. King so another Poseidon. Another great example of, of you know, having these combiners that are, are present throughout the entire series, but now they become a major yeah. like the a focus major influence. of their own series. And, and they become kind of like this hazard, too. It's interesting, I started getting into kind of the lore and the mythology of this a little bit more, because I heard this term, like, the enigma of combination, and that just sounded like gobbledygook to me. It didn't make any sense. So it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but basically, like, if you dig into this a little bit, there are, like, artifacts of the primes, and I think there were, like, 12 or 13 primes, which were, right. like, the older, like, the elder um, robots from millions of years ago or whatever, and they make a bunch of different artifacts. One of them is the Enigma of Combination. Another one was, like, the Matrix of Leadership, which you've probably heard right. of either from the movies or from previous shows that we've done. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. And because it's comic book stuff, um, there are more than 13, so it wasn't just, like, one for each Prime. They basically just create a new one anytime they want to, like, make another, spin another plot off. So I don't know where Enigma of Combination came in, but whatever. It's cool. It lets you combine giant robots into even more mega giant robots. Basically, right. like, like, watching Transformers turn into Voltron or, like, Power Rangers. They, they take robots that are already huge, and they make them into something that's just, like, gargantuan. It's actually kind so of it's, funny. It's, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, so it's sort of like... Uh, like Metroplex, you know, like these, we, we have some of these really, really giant sure. transformers, like, uh, is it Unicron? Unicron was like, what, the size of Unicron's a planet? A, he's a planet. Yeah. He's a planet. And we have Metroplex, which is, a, you know, we, we've seen a him city. in some previous episodes yeah. where he's a giant, like, mobile city yeah. that, that helps out and is, is thankfully also on the, the Autobot side. Yeah. And so. We have all of these, these things that exist, and so the, the size and the scale and the magnitude of some of these Transformers, again, it, it, it's, it's there in the series. It might not ever really be highlighted right. until we sort of get into Combiner Wars, which, you know, but it's nice because I feel like this sort of pays, this sort of feels earned in the sense that, you know, you, you've had these things that have been around in the series from the beginning, right. and now finally there's some kind of a payoff, or there's some reason that they, they exist, and so this this enigma is a is a kind of a cool artifact to kind of to discuss yeah and apparently it has kind of like the power to make more combiners or destroy the ones that are currently existing and that kind of becomes this bone of contention between the the two sides we'll, we'll get into that in a second but so just to explain like i don't think metroplex or unicron are combiners they're just huge so like sean's talking about huge. the scale the differences in scale that we have throughout the, the universe and this is a cool kind of middle ground we get to focus on 
I have a really quick aside. Uh, I'm going to talk about those crazy Toy Story toys for a second. I, at work, just came across this press release for these Bandai toys that are distributed from a company uh, called Bluefin here in North America. They are what's called uh, Chogokin, which is basically, they've been around for like 40 years. Chogokin, if I'm saying that correctly, I'm probably not. They're basically just transforming bots. So it's like robots that form into larger robots. Well, for whatever reason, Japan, thank you so much, they have done this with the Toy Story character. So they've turned, like, Woody, Ham, the pig, Rex, the, the T-Rex, uh, his horse, they have turned them into transforming creatures that form, that shape and form together to form, like, giant combination robot Sheriff Woody. A giant Sheriff Robo, I think. It's the craziest thing, because... Woody forms, like, the center of it, but you can't even see him once all this other stuff is attached to him. Because, like, Rex, Rex folds in half, and his nose is, like, shoved up his own ass, and... What? Yeah, it's really weird to watch him, like, being transformed. They're, like, super Holy intricate. Crap. Actually kind of impressive, but also very disturbing, like, watching Beast Wars. Um, and then Woody, like, I think his horse is, like, one of his arms, so you have to, like, fold the horse's chest cavity out so that Woody's head goes into it. It's really fucking disturbing to watch, but it's actually kind of cool once they're all set up. The crazy oh thing is they've got one for, like, the, the Woody's toys kind of thing. They've got another one for Buzz Lightyear, the aliens, his space shuttle. They all form together into, like, a giant, um, a giant spaceman robo. And then, in the spirit of Combiner Wars, both of those robots can also form together into, like, one mega super crazy robot. Um, this is just... I just had to bring this up because it's fucking insane. Uh, you can buy them later this year for like 200 bucks a piece. One, I think, is like, <laughs> yeah, November, December. The other one's in like January. So you can check them out. We're actually going to post pictures and video and stuff on our, on our site. It's crazy to watch. It's just one of the wackiest things ever. Something I never would have thought in a million years would, would happen. Uh, but there it is in the spirit of Transformers Combiner Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you give people 3D printers. So I applaud you. It's, I mean, it's an engineering feat to watch. There's like a five minute video of a guy with white gloves, kind of like an unboxing video, but he's just breaking down each individual character and showing how they morph into like the oh, arm shit. or leg or head or whatever. And it's the craziest thing to watch. So we'll put them up on the site, but that's just my little sidebar for tonight. Nice. So you ready to jump into this here? I am. How do you feel so, about, like, we can't really talk about a theme song because there really isn't one. There's like well, a, we could talk a little bit about maybe... Like a title we could talk about the, we, we could talk about the art style and I think sort of the soundtrack or the score that they have that's behind everything. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I think you that those are all... That? What are your thoughts yeah. on Yeah. So I, I really loved this. Okay. I, I, really, I really enjoyed the, the art style that they decided to go with uh, for a lot of this because it, it harkens back to the old school toys that we we've seen there are a lot of really bright colors mm -hmm. um things felt very fresh and and, and very vibrant and it, it's sort of a combination it felt like between sort of almost cell shaded animation and cgi i'm just smiling at the word combination i know i want to see how many times listeners at home if you're playing a drinking game see how many times we say a variation of the word com combination um, combiner one of those Oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I've got a lot on my mind. I'm over here having a snack, eating all these combos. Eating the combos. It's, uh, nice. Yeah. I just got done finishing. Uh, I, I was playing Killer Instinct for a while, just working on my combo breakers. But, uh... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So I, I really liked, uh, I really liked the, the, the style and the direction that they went with all of this. Uh, everything looked sort of like how if you were to scan and take an, an imprint of yeah. some of those 80s toys and you put them in a current thing, which to me, felt important because you know we've we've watched a lot of variations of of Optimus Prime right. over the last couple of weeks, and this was the one that I think that I related to the most. And I, it was actually kind of funny because as we were as we were doing this the other day, I posted on our Instagram account for our Throwback Thursday uh, the picture of the original Optimus Prime toy right. that had the tractor trailer and had uh, you know the original looking optimist and you know it was just that was a time when things felt right like whenever i think about transformers yeah. and whenever i i consider the the notion of transformers and that franchise that's the style and the 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 look that i always go back to yeah it's just kind and of like so the for classic me, design and what we were used to growing up with and we've seen some more kind of like cartoonish a little more fluid human right. human animation less boxy kind of robot stuff so i, I, so I we've seen some 
we've seen the the sleeker, sexier yeah. anime Optimus Prime. Exactly. You know, we've seen the the awful garbage Cholo flames on the side of it. Thanks to fuck you, Michael Bay. And so you know, there's just there's a lot of things to to consider on this, guys. Just stop going to see those movies. If we there's one that's coming out. If we stop Transformers, now, the last night. If we stop now, they'll stop making it. And I'm talking directly to you overseas. I, I know. All right? The, Knock it off. The worst thing right now is that we have a set visit interview and, and information that's embargoed, so I can't, like, like legally can't tell you anything right now. I know stuff you that's going to make, bitch. It's gonna make you all so upset. It's going to make you I, so I, angry, especially fucking, Sean. There's so <laughs> much stuff. Once you hear where Michael Bay is basically like, well, we took Transformers and combined it with this. Care Bears. Mm, you'll see. But you're son, probably not going to be happy. I am not going to be happy. No I'm not going to be happy. Just wait. Oh, so, we'll talk about it. All, we'll it talk about it on our Facebook page once the show comes up. All right. So you know the the thing is is that uh, uh, Dave, I think you you made the great point of, of saying that this was this was what we think of. This is kind of the the style and the the artwork and the animation that goes on on when we think about Transformers, yeah. and and it felt. Honestly, it kind of felt like we were going back to that G1, but it had, uh, you know, a, just a little bit more of a colorful impact. I, I just, I loved, I loved the style and the artwork on this. And I, I guess the final point that was something that is very easy to underlook mm -hmm. is that there is almost like a weird Tron kind of like Daft Punk soundtrack. It's a very futuristic kind of uh, space rock kind of sound. Right. Yeah. And it just kind of pulses in the background yeah. as you're watching the show. And it, it's, it's very understated. It's very almost muted. But it, I, there were moments when I was just like, oh, when are they going to release the soundtrack for this? Because I would totally zone out to this all day yeah, at work. exactly. Like, listen to this. This sounds awesome. You know, and it, it just, it was a lot of fun. Like, the, the artwork had me ready to really get involved in the show. And then the music kind of brought me in even further. And so th those are two aspects of things that I don't think that we really give a lot of conversation no, to on the show. And, and so, you know, it, because in, in most cases, that sort of is filled or presented to you in the theme song. Right. And sort of that's, you know, in many cases, that's your exposure. That's your, your gateway yeah, your into the rest of the universe. The series. Yeah. And since these things are only about five minutes long, they don't really have the time to do that. So you basically get right. like a title card. They don't even, they literally don't even say a title card. It's just like the series title card. They stamp yeah. it on the screen and then it gets right into it, to whatever they're doing. Because it's only five yeah. minutes long. So they don't got time to screw around. Your thoughts about music, art direction? No, I'm pretty much with you. The only thing I wanted to talk about was the differences of animation style in the prelude episodes versus what we actually got in the legit series episodes. Let's get so, into it, because I know that I only watched one of the prelude episodes, right. and I know that you've watched all of them. Yeah, so the prelude episodes are, again, interesting because they each introduce uh, a separate character to who you are probably familiar with and to who you may or may not be. So they give you perspective of four different characters from um, different points of view. They've all got their own goals and their own kind of like end game in mind and their own um, personalities that they bring to these things. Each of these preludes, they're only about two minutes long each. They also bring a very specific style. And to be honest, when I first watched the Optimus one, <laughs> I was concerned. <laughs> because when we watched this one, it was your first, uh, your first glimpse at what, this, what we thought this new series was going to be. Um, so when you're watching and like Optimus is like taking steps, but in like in like six frames, he just takes like kind of a herky-jerky step forward. I was like, oh, this, no, they can't be doing this if this is yeah. the whole series. But no, they're more like, this first one at least was stylized like a motion comic. Because it actually is, is Optimus's kind of reflections on the final days of the Great War. And he, I love the design because he's got like the cracked windshield. His voice is a little more roughed up. He sounds kind of war-weary. He's basically like been through the ringer. So it's like him and Megatron square off for like one last time, and you're left with Megatron defeated on the ground and Optimus just like pointing the barrel of his mega gun at him. And that's all you don't you don't know what happens after that. Right. But basically Optimus is like, we finished the war, it's done, but unfortunately there's like another one coming, but we're not gonna be a part of it. Right. So what were your take? I, what was your take on this? Uh my take on it when I saw this at the very end of July. Mm -hmm this year was I wanted to call you actually I wanted to come down to Atlanta and slap you because I was like if this is what the rest of this fucking series yeah, if we're doing five weeks of this <laughs> show leading up to this I was like I'm going to be so frustrated for five complete weeks I'm, I'm glad they, they did not make that choice this was just like an aesthetic choice for this particular episode and it, it changed drastically yeah. from there on out and, and 
only having watched the the Optimus episode, it, it it's kind of nice. And I, I think the thing that's fun about this that they kind of tease at is that it leaves you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Right. You yeah, know, because you and, know and Optimus gives is involved, you... but you don't know quite how, you don't know how much, right. you don't know if he's it, survived. It gives you a reason, and if you're invested in the Transformers franchise, it, you know, there's a want now to see what actually happens. Because right. they're not going to introduce Optimus Prime and say, I'm not going to be a part of this war, and then right. not have him be a part of this exactly. fucking war. Like, come on, guys. Like, he's, he's, 100, he's 100% in part 100%. of this war. Like, 100. And so, like, he's definitely involved with it. So... Uh, but it was good. I, I just I had the same complaint about the the herky jerky style a lot of, of the, the animation. A lot of people yeah. did. It was not a great first step forward. Not 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 the best choice in retrospect. But they they smoothed it out. It's fine. Um, yeah. The rest of the preludes are actually like more indicative of the animation you see in the actual show. Right. I'll, I'll start with Starscream, or I'll continue with Starscream because it's the one that most people know. It's it's actually kind of funny because it's just like him. He has this weird like Top Gun music in the background because he's just like. <laughs> flying through these like banks of clouds with like faces of other transformers that he's talking about just kind of like floating through the clouds it's like one of the weirdest things but it's like this like kind of chill but kind of energetic like top gun music it's like like the real heavy like guitar riffs and stuff but he's like just like kenny kenny loggins on yeah, like the wing of a kenny F-14. transformer style yeah he's just like standing <laughs> on the wing of starscream just like playing guitar um <laughs> So Starscream, traditionally villainous, has been for years and years and years, and even like within this universe, other characters know his history, right? So it's not just like he was a villain, but now he's good. It's like people still don't quite know where his allegiances lie. So it's interesting to see him admitting in this short prelude, he admits kind of his past, he admits that he was always second in command to Megatron, he admits that he always wanted to grasp that power, but he could never quite get there, and he says now he's finally... He's finally got his dream of being in charge as he's part of this trio of bots that are in charge of Cybertron. But he now feels the weight of leadership. So he, he says, you know, uh, I'm, in, I'm in league with my former enemy. I'm in, I'm in league with uh, a, a noble from Caminus, which is this war-torn planet. Uh, and he says his lust of power is gone. It's been replaced with, with the urgency of need for leadership and peace. So he feels that Cybertron needs like strong leaders and that was like his call to be like basically to mature stop being such a dickhead and to actually what like jerk. like man up so that was kind of cool to see it it was really weird to see it to like this Top Gun background um, no, I mean what a what a what a jerk I mean you know he bitches for he bitches for years decade. you know Millions how long how no I mean seriously no, I mean we talked about this in the first Remember episode when they crashed yeah, it's and been like millions. the prehistoric yeah it was four million years, four million years. They, were, they were asleep for four million years yeah. this guy has wanted this job for Four plus million years. Right. Like this, this guy has been complaining and bitching about this nonstop. Yeah. He's finally given what he wants, and he's like, "Ugh, now I gotta do work." <laughs> Pretty oh, much, son of a bitch. But I like it though because they don't just show him turning into another Megatron. They don't just show him right. being like this evil guy for no reason when there's like work to be done. So a different take might not be for everybody. Different take. I like. It. And and to that point, I'm gonna agree with you, and then add on the idea of. I love the fact that he didn't become Megatron. Like, right. despite having bitched for those four million plus years, <laughs> he actually learned something, which from watching these episodes, yeah. it seems like he actually learned how to be a leader. Yeah, definitely. It seems like he, because, you even know, Even if it was like by not doing what Megatron was doing. Like, even if it exactly. took four million years to learn to not do that. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, there have been moments where like everybody has shitty bosses at work. When you say to yourself, like, when I get in that position of power, when I become a manager, right. I'm not going to be that shitty manager who does that shit. I, I'm, I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be that person. That's not going to be my style. And then hopefully when you're put in that position, you can just turn into a jet on and fucking fly off. Just Kenny Loggins and you transform into a guitar so and he just person. shreds. I don't know why I started saying the Baywatch name there, but it seemed fitting. Yeah, I don't know, Hasselhoff. What are you doing? I'm just thinking of Hasselhoff running down the beach right now. Oh no! Anyway, the other this, two this... prelude episodes. So I, I was <laughs> welcome familiar... to Saturday morning Baywatch. Yeah. Oh, we... We're going to scrap this podcast. And we're just going to review every single episode of Baywatch. Oh, son of a. Okay. It's yeah. Be great. I mean, I'll... I mean that eye candy alone. This has been Saturday morning cartoons. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so no, we've got we've got two more uh, characters to introduce. I wasn't familiar with either one of these. So one is called Victorion, and just real quick, she's basically a combiner who was born from the Enigma of Combination. And she considers herself a sort of a savior, a galaxy protector. This, her whole thing, there's like this very kind of like ethereal, just kind of like gal- like space-based music. It's just very like open and flowy and kind of universal sounding, almost like 
you're listening to Enya. And she's just <laughs> kind of like floating through space and slowly the camera's like withdrawing from her so you get to see her like full form because she's massive. She's a combiner. She's got this mega sword, which is very like idealistic and she thinks that she can do better than leaders of the past. But then we don't really see too much from Victorian, so it's kind of like this ideal that's out there that wants to be a good leader of combiners, but that's all we get to see. So we're introduced right. to her, but we don't know too much about her. So then there's Windblade, which I think might be kind of the most interesting character that we're introduced to. She uh, is, is known as a city speaker, and I still don't 100% know what that is, but a city speaker on the planet of Caminus. And she feels abandoned by the city's leader, who's the Mistress of Flame. She's the one that went to form the, the trio with Starscream and Rodimus on Cybertron. So she left. She abandoned the, the war, or she abandoned the planet in the midst of this war among the Combiners. So Windblade now has this, like, vendetta. She's got this chip on her shoulder. She wants to basically abandon her job, and she just wants to turn into an assassin. She wants to kill all the Combiners, Autobots, Decepticons, doesn't matter, and she wants nothing to do with diplomacy. So she's kind of like your wild card at this point. Like it, yeah. Like it, and that's where we get into it. So, I mean, that is the introduction of the four kind of like some of the main characters that we'll see before you actually get into the into the show. And man, right. do they get into the show in a crazy Ooh. way! So, I'll, I'll give it to you. What were kind of your first impressions from the first few minutes of the first episode, yeah. which is titled "The Fall"? So, there was a lot of falling. Lots that of was falling. also followed by a lot of punching. Literal fall to start this. Uh, literal fall, literal punching. Yep. Quite a bit of it, yep. like a lot, <laughs> and then some crash, and then some crashing. Yeah, yeah we uh, we're we're introduced to uh two, um two robots that you're not really sure who their allegiance is, and you're not really sure yeah. what's going on. Who here, they are? But what's you going see, on? Yeah, you see, uh, you see on the the screen, it just says Caminus, and so you're like, okay, great. I have a, a sense of kind of where I am. Right. We've talked about a lot of the other planets that they have that are within this universe, and so sure, let's add some more planets into the mix. Right. Uh, so we have these two robots that are fighting. Really, don't have a, a sense of scale yet. No, because they're kind literally of like how... in orbit of a planet that, I mean, it could be Jupiter, it could be like Mercury. You don't know. Now, I think the thing that was really interesting about this this battle and and sort of this beginning is that many times when we see Autobots and Decepticons fight, uh, I, I'm going to say that the they don't really have a lot of battle damage. Yes, thank you, you for know? bringing that up because that was one of the things I loved about this series so far. Right. Yeah. So. They get to this point where, you know, they've, they've been fighting. They are, no lie, this is a five-minute episode. They're punching in outer space. They are punching. Punch. For, punching. They are punching for, like, at least a good minute it's, of it. It's a solid minute of space punching. <laughs> it's just, it's so Which much space punching. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that, but that'll tire you out. Yeah. You know, and so we've cardio, seen Autobots swim not. this month, you know, which is, you know, great. We so that we're getting ready for like an Autobot it's or like, Autobot a, like a robot. Yeah, Autobot Olympics. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. I would watch the hell out of that. That'd uh. be fucking great. So we get these two robots that are kind of falling and descending towards uh, Camus. Right. Um, yeah, they kind of like flew out of a space gate or like a transporter thing. They don't right. explain that either. It's just like this weird transport gate in space when that I, launches them out. When I saw it, I was like, fingers crossed. So we're gonna have our buddy Space Train oh, shoot man, out of that, that little been gate. Amazing. He did not. He did not yet. So no Space No Train Bot. So ruined. <laughs> a, but no, he we should be a combiner though, right? He should. He, he should, should definitely be, be a combiner. Yeah. So fingers crossed that we're gonna get to see Space Train Heck coming yeah, up in a little bot. bit. So we uh we get we get sort of a, a sense of scale finally when they crash to the planet. And in this moment, uh, you can kind of tell that. Uh, just with some of the wreckage, you still don't really have a great sense of what their scale is. Right. But you can tell that one of them, that I will say is in some brighter colors, yeah. like some reds and some yellows, uh, which is kind of synonymous with a lot of the Autobots that we have. Yeah. Uh, he is sort of just getting pummeled. Like he has been space punched almost in half at this point. <laughs> he's got limbs he's just fa- everywhere. He's fallen to the planet, and it, it's something where he's just like, he's like, ah. Uh, He's, he's kind of calculating in his, his head what the success rate is that he has with this. And suddenly, almost like, I mean, it, it's obviously provoked because they've been battling, but it seems sort of uh, crazy because of the series that we've had so far where we've explained, these guys are robots. Yeah. You destroy them, you beat them up. Like Optimus Prime has died and come back of dozens of times. Even just in the last month alone, he's right. died half a dozen times. God, yeah. So, I mean, like, it doesn't really feel like there's a lot uh, that we need to, to really invest in these characters because even if somebody dies, they're just going to come right back. Yeah. But in this moment, 
suddenly you see this other robot just like foot crush the head <laughs> of this robot as he's as he's calculating and saying like chances of or chances of calculations to be able to survive this and you just have this guy in sort of almost like a a, a raspy kind of petulant star scream voice. voice he's like none his voice was he not just good smashes him most, and i'm just like oh most of these voices the were, were pretty good his voice was not good because he sounded like he yeah. was trying to be kind of street but also kind of like I don't know, he had like this weird kind of like trying trying too hard to be hip quality to him. But he's like this massive like building sized robot that's just like smack. I don't know. That that was the only one that really like irked me as far as voice right. acting goes. We should mention, uh, you mentioned battle damage, right? Right. So my first introduction to that was Optimus with his like cracked windshield chest. Awesome. This guy, so this is actually Menasaur and Computron. So Computron's right. the more robotic of the robots that's calculating his chances of survival. Menasaur is the, the other guy that's crushing his head. Obviously. I mean, you can figure it out from their names. But, right. Um, so we know this because they each, I think Computron says something like, Menasaur and Computron should not be fighting. He's just got like this weird, like robotic thing. And you're like, oh, I guess oh, this okay. is Menasaur and Computron. Uh, it was actually funny you bring that up yeah. just in terms of their names because I didn't actually realize what their names were until the second episode where they make reference they and reference mention it back to it. Again. It's a quick thing. But Computron says, like, Menasaur and Computron should not be fighting each other. He's trying to, like, talk him out of crushing his head with his boot, basically. Um, but then, yeah, so, the, so they fight. And then, Sean, to your point, I love the battle damage. The fact that, like, one of the guys gets his arms ripped off. Uh, yeah, they're just, gets an like, arm and a leg ripped arm off. Arm and a leg, and he's just, like, arcing and sparking all over the place. And he's kind of, like, you know, on the ground. And I love that, because you don't usually see that. They get, like, laser blasted, and they get knocked over, and they fall, and whatever. But you don't really see too much battle damage. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. There's a lot of pew, 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 but then oh, they yeah. just kind of brush off everything. Yeah. In this, it seems like there were it's actual lives that were taken. Oh, and it gets, uh, it gets robotic too. I mean, there, there's other characters that come in right now. and uh, Right, when they squeeze that wit wiki and he exploded in their hands. Yeah, which was fine. Totally fine. Yeah, I was fine with that. Yeah. I'm perfectly okay with nice that. No, but Easter egg. Your, point, your point is is that they do bring in two characters yep. uh, in the form of Jets. Yep. That suddenly show up like out of sleek, nowhere, like sleek, and, super sexy jets, though. Yeah, well, so that was the crazy thing <laughs> is that like, and and this is a great point, and, and you know we we've mentioned this before, is that, or maybe we haven't mentioned this this month mm. really because we have had a couple cameos mm-hmm. from female characters, but there are female robots right. that are in this universe that are in the universe of Transformers. It's just really sad that you know they're very underlooked. Uh, you don't really see a lot of them. Um, no, I, but they are. I honestly couldn't name one off the top of my head until this series. Uh, the only one that I can think of is RC. Yeah, see, I wouldn't even know that except, uh, what did we yeah. watch, Robots in Disguise or whatever? No, 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 it wasn't even that one. She wasn't on RC. She was, uh, I think she was actually maybe in the movie. Well, she, um, she was in the background of one of them, and it was RC, but nobody ever mentioned her by name. And like you said, like, they're not featured very often. So. Uh, there's another one that was from either Headmasters or Super God Master Force that was called Minerva. Oh, uh, maybe that's so what I'm thinking of. Okay. There, there are a couple that do exist. Um, and actually, for the past month, if you are following us on Instagram, I've been putting them out for our uh, Women Crush Wednesdays. <laughs> nice. um, have been different female Transformers. <laughs> so you're going <laughs> to add you know, Windblade uh, and Maxima to that list? So I, yeah, absolutely can now. Nice. And so we, thank you, are introduced to Windblade and Maxima uh, in this moment who kind of begin to go uh, toe-to-toe uh, without really even a beginning of a conversation. No. It's just they immediately open fire on Menasaur. But now you get a sense of scale because they're like, right. they're still Thank transformer you. sized, but they're like super small compared to this guy. And I loved uh, Menasaur's kind of like his really slow, heavy animation as he walked. Like he's got this slow kind of like ponderous gait that really like shakes the whole screen and you can really hear it kind of resonate throughout the structure that they're in every time he takes a step. And meanwhile, these two lady jets are just like, flying around him and zipping around super quick. They're nowhere right. near as big as him, but they're so much faster. So in this moment, as they're battling, something happens. Yep. We get this moment where uh, <clears throat> you know, Windblade gets captured. Right. She is in Menasaur's she hand. She just gets snatched out of the air. She gets snatched out of the air. And Maxima is like, I'm looking out for you. We're friends. They're has ladies. We're gonna, we're gonna make this happen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're part of the Hasbro. They're part of the Hasbro they're, they're the, lady, lady coalition. Right. And so, they're looking out for each other. Maxima comes in and sort of 
you, you really get a sense of scale in this instance yeah. because she flies right into <laughs> Menasaur's face. Yeah. Puts her boots in his eyes, basically. And so, and she has like rockets like on the bottom of her feet, yeah. you know, where whenever she transforms into the jet, that's like the, the afterburners. Yeah. And so those afterburners are right in Menasaur's eyes and she just puts them full force to begin to burn part of his it's face. Sweet move. And in this instance, he just sort of, Menasaur just bitch slaps <laughs> Maxima. Her into the wall. He packs hand her into oh. the wall and she dies. Yeah, 100% did. Again. We are, like you, and we are you not know even, from the light that's in her eyes just going, just goes, she's the lights out. Oh. So, again, we are in a five minute episode and we've already killed two characters. Now, right. you've we've just been watching, we have been watching this show for a month now, and the only thing that we've really seen killed is like a tenna kill. Yeah, which is, you know, funny. and that was just a BS drone that nobody cared <laughs> about, right. you know? Uh, so, we have all this stuff that's going on. Now, Windblade does not take this very well. No. This fallen sister of hers, right. she's pretty pissed about it, which, as we mentioned and we talked about the character, that, and, and Dave kind of gave some of her, her I guess, intent or her goals, right. which is to kill combiners. She doesn't care if you're an Autobot or Decepticon. You are dead to her. And this is taking place on her home planet that she used to be like a speaker for. So she's seeing right. this destruction and devastation like up close and personal. So she's right. starting her quest right here, right now. She pulls out this crazy pink sword, yeah. crazy pink, like magenta glowing sword. It's a sweet looking sword. And she, it is yeah. because she uses it to rip through this combiner in record speed. It's pretty great. Like, it's literally amazing. Just, like drawing and quartering him at this point, like cleave his entire arm off and then cut across his midsection. Basically, and as, yeah, go ahead. as Menasaur is dying, yeah. he's just like, don't worry, we're going to use the Enigma of Combination to build an army. Army. <laughs> like, an army of combiners. <laughs> yeah. The voice was actually worse than that. Um, <laughs> it reminded me of, uh, of Dino Riders, where Cruelos is like, oh, no. we're going to build an army of dinosaurs. <laughs> That's an impressive Cruelos. I could not be happier. Yeah, now I can't talk for the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Walker. But, but anyway, we get this, we get thing, this yeah. moment. Yeah. We have this moment now where uh, Computron is on the ground and he sort of begins blinking a little bit. Yeah, and, and real quick before that, before we get to Computron, um, there's this kind of quick uh, exchange that goes between Windblade and Menasaur because Windblade is, says, like, this is for Caminus and this is for my people and this is for Maxima. And then she, that, as she's like cutting him up and he's like laughing and he's like, you know, some of this is actually for you. I think you enjoy the killing as he's like laying there bleeding out like hydraulic yeah. fluid. He's like, I think you kind of enjoy this. And then, yeah, he reveals the fact that the council has the enigma of combination. And then, yes, they are going to build an army of combiners. So then we get right. to Computron, who's not quite dead yet. No, no, he's got a he's got a little battery left and he begins blinking ever so slightly. And then you get the episode one reveal. Who's he talking to? He's talking to battle damaged, exiled Optimus Prime. Oh, who shit. Makes, who makes a very quick end of the episode cameo, and then it's just blackout. It's blackout. Five minutes later. The only, the only other thing with this is that uh, Windblade, as she heads out, she does pick up Maxima's rifle, which will come into play next up. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so what, what was your impression of the first episode? I liked it. Okay. I, I, I liked it. You, you kind of, you don't really know 100% what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that was my uh, first impression. So I was like, wow. And, uh. and, and, but I, I will say that, you know, these episodes are short enough yeah. and there's a decent amount of action and you, you got, you received, I think, the sense of scale that you, you kind of want to see in these shows. And if these things are combiners and it's a part of the Transformer lore, yeah. it, I'm kind of interested, you know, to give it another five minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is nice. Definitely. Because of the format of this show, uh, you know, allows that. Like, they're not going to, like, there's no room in these episodes to give fat. No, like, you, there's, you there's, just don't have the room in the script or the budget, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, everything's trimmed from this. So, like, what you're getting, everything is relevant to what's about to happen. Right. And that's, that's fun. That's important. That feels like you're making an investment in something that's going to hopefully have a payoff which is because good because there's... not only are they five minute episodes but they're only once a week you know right so it's like you watch a five minute thing and then you got a week you know six days until the next one comes out so i'm still a little on the fence with that model um 
but at least I like their storytelling style. I like being able to watch these things in five minutes and think about it and then be done with it and move on and then come back right. to it later. Um, but I'm still... I think the bonus... Impressed. Yeah. I know. And I think the formatting is a little bit challenging, mm-hmm. but here's, here's the great thing about this format and sort of the release structure that they have is that if you want to, you can watch this week by week. If you want to wait until all seven are out sure. and binge, you can do that as well. In like a half hour. If you yeah. want it, yeah. If you want to do both, if you want to watch them week by, if you want to watch them week by week, and then finally when they're all out, binge on them again, you've wasted an hour and a half. Yeah. Not even that. And then listen and so, to our podcast for an hour. It's like two and a half hours. Not a big. Deal. Yeah, we're gonna waste more time on this show <laughs> than will. they waste in the actual episodes that we <laughs> watch. You will if you watch the entire series. <laughs> yeah. So come waste time with us, and then go waste time there. All right, so we get to the second episode, and the second episode is titled The Council. So you yeah. might have guessed we are now back on Cybertron, which itself, it's not super peaceful. It's still kind of war-torn. There's, like, pockets of explosions just randomly going off different places. And we follow Starscream in as he arrives uh, at the, like, center of the city kind of thing to talk to his council members. Now, because this is kind of like a stripped-down, low-budget show, there's not a lot of other characters around. So it's literally just, <laughs> it looks like a dead city. There's nobody else around, but Starscream yeah. flies in and he sees Rodimus and the Mistress of Flame. Now, apparently they get across that like the battle between um, Computron and Menasaur has already kind of like spread across Cybertron. Like everybody knows about it. I don't know how they know about it, but everybody knows about it. And people are starting to get scared. So it's up to the council to figure out what they want to do. I mean, Starscream. So Starscream's approach is everybody needs to stay calm. We need to study the enigma of combination and figure out what it can do. Uh, he has a really creepy line where he's like, I've brought the bodies of dead combiners. I've ordered them to be here so we can like yeah. dissect them and study them. I was like, that's kind of fucked up. But okay, I guess. Yeah. Sure, I mean, I, do I, the weird science stuff. All right. I, I guess you have to have some type of a robot autopsy in, in order to, to be able to figure out how this works. I guess. So that's what he it, plans I, to do. So he's kind of like cooler heads will prevail. Meanwhile, Rodimus just wants to, like, use the Enigma of Combination to actually create more combiners. Now, this was, like, Optimus's heir apparent. This was, like, his right. second-in-command. This is the guy that, like, was taking on the mantle of leadership. And he basically wants to make more giant, giant-er fighting robots. Right. Uh, yeah. If you're not familiar with Rodimus, he is the, ro- he is the, the prime that received the, the Matrix of Leadership right. in the 1986 movie when Optimus died and screwed up all of our childhood. That's right. Gave us nightmares forever. That's okay. He came back about 16 more times. So it was totally fine. Yeah. Uh, so Rodimus, so, so if, if, we're, if we're following along here, Starscream wants to like keep calm, study on. Rodimus wants to make an army of monsters. And then we've got right. this other person, uh, the Mistress of Flame, who basically wants to use this Enigma of Combination and just wipe them all out. Just get rid right. of them. And I love the, the fact that, like, Starscream is basically just like, there's still Autobots and Decepticons. That's genocide, and I want no part of that. And then she challenges them on that, which I thought was really she cool. She does. It was a cool I, thing I to do in a five-minute episode, too, with the giant sentient talking robots. Like, you don't often find that. So that was pretty refreshing. And, and, and in this moment, we have, uh, we have Starscream mm-hmm. is the voice of reason. Which, guys, exactly. this is ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. This is the guy... Who has, who has literally been telling everybody on his team, I'm going to take over, and you guys are going to be bowing down to me. Yeah. Rumble. Uh, I'm going to Meg- get Megatron's job. And Rumble's all like, no, you're not. Don't think so, bro. It's going to piss and uh, pop you in the face. <laughs> but, I mean, Dave is right. Starscream has the line, we can't just murder our own people. Yeah. He literally uses the word genocide, which basically like, makes yes. them go like, oh, yeah, I guess genocide's bad. And Mistress, and Mistress of Flame comes right back at him, and she just says, we all know your past. Yeah, like, we all know what you. you've done. I don't think it's I've kind done of, genocide. Have I? Yeah, it's kind of a, like, this is sort of a pot calling the kettle a robot yeah. at this point. So it's, it's incredible. And I, I will say the interesting thing about this is that the entire time that this whole conversation is going on, right. every once in a while, it all of a sudden cuts out to a different shot. Yeah, like real far away. Where, yeah, re- not not real far away. It, it's almost like you're watching everything through like a security camera. Mm. And then all of a sudden it has a crosshair in it. Yeah. And you're just like, what? I don't really understand what this is. <laughs> doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, Unless you've played a lot of first person huh. shooters and you probably got exactly. Idea. Yeah. Remember Just when Windblade picked up that rifle in the last episode? Yep. Yeah. She, well, it uh, turns out that she's a. Uh, she's hanging out. 
She's hanging out. She's sniping. Yeah. Except what's she so, actually going after? She's not actually so, going after any of the council members, which I thought was She's not. She's going after the Enigma. Now, right. I want to bring up one line that's re- that really kind of stuck with me. Okay. Not because it was uh, pivotal or impactful in any way, but just because it was like a, a what? Yeah. Where, where uh, Starscream, he just goes, we don't even know how the Enigma works. I was like, oh, really? You don't know how something called an Enigma <laughs> works? Oh, no shit. You mean the Enigma is still an Enigma? Oh, I didn't see that one coming. We haven't puzzled it out yet. Yeah, otherwise it would have been called the solution to combination, <laughs> idiot. Right. You dumb dumb. But yeah, like uh in this moment, what happens, Dave? We get we get Windblade up on this roof. Windblade's ready to just like light up this Enigma combination with her little sniper rifle, yeah. and she's she seems like pretty good shot because she wasn't far off. Uh Ooh, seems like something's about to happen except now. Except for somebody from the shadows just comes and basically like kicks her to the side, <laughs> just throws <laughs> off her aim. Which was interesting because then she clipped Starscream. So she actually hits him like in the shoulder. So again, we get to see um, robots that are actually like injured by other robot weapons. Which normally it would just like ping off of his shoulder and he'd just be like, the fuck was that? But that's all you'd hear. But I really, I really want to say that she hits Starscream, like grazes Starscream in the arm. And he goes flying (laughs) down on the ground and it was like a Peter Griffin lay it. Uh, My favorite part like, was it took, I, it took Mistress of Flame a good 30 seconds to like turn herself around and look and just be like, we're under attack! It took Sound Rodimus! The alarms. It took Rodimus 30 seconds to realize what had happened and then rush over to Starscream yeah. to be able to see if he was okay. It's like, you guys are the only ones in the room! You're the only ones in the room! Look, if I ever get shot, yeah. please don't take 30 seconds to come over It'll be and like see me, if I'm it'd okay. It'd be like if me, Mel, and Sean were all in the same room. <laughs> Sean just went flying across the room. You might not have heard a gunshot, nothing. Just went flying across the room, smashed into a wall. And if we just stood there and stared at him for about 30 seconds and then did something. <laughs> and then you waved your arm into the sky and go, sound, sound the alarms. The alarm. yeah. Like, what are you doing, Dave? So uh, everything was good up until that point. And then we cut back where it turns out that Optimus is actually the one who interfered because he yeah. thought she was going to like try to take out one of the council members. But we don't get into that until the next episode. Ooh, let's get into this third episode. Let's get into we got the, a lot going on in this. Duel. Yeah. Who's the duel between? It is. <laughs> it's a trick question. No, it's really no. Not. It is. There's only two uh, people between, in this episode. Right. It's between Optimus Prime right. and it's between Windblade. And I have to be honest with you, this episode is great. This episode shows what you want in Optimus Prime. He is looking rugged like an old man, but he is moving like a young Muhammad so, Ali. I've got, I've got some issues with the way he moves in this because it's like, we just saw her take down like Menasaur. And there are sure. moments in this thing where she's like, she's like leaping into the air and leaping off of cave walls and like trying to spear him. And he literally just like takes a wonky lumbering step to the side and like she completely misses. I get what they I were trying it. to do. It just didn't quite <laughs> land for me. There were some moments where he was just like doing his kind of like Tai Chi moves and like using her energy against her. And that was cool. But the stuff where he like, like the blades coming right at his face and he just like takes a step back and she drives the sword into the ground. I was like, I don't 100% okay. buy it. But I get what they were trying to do and I appreciate the effort. I, I like the fact that it was something that it just sort of showed that, you know, we, we've talked about the fact that the Autobots are supposed to be protectors. That right. They were supposed to be, uh, you know, they were not built for war they were not built for combat this is something that over the course of this four million plus year war that's been going on that they've had to adapt to that they've had to reconcile with themselves internally and say you know we're we're fighting like we're fighting for our freedom and this is the stance that we're taking and we have to we have to get combat smart and i think that this was one of those things that like it very quickly showed the supremacy of optimus prime in those in those types of battles because you know, we have Windblade who's making these really grandiose, fast moves where she is coming in for the kill left or right. She's not pulling punches. No. She's not holding back at all. And you just see Optimus without really having to do anything, just sort of block and dodge everything. It was and like so- watching Neo in the Matrix once he finally like has that yes. awakening. And he's just mm-hmm. like in the hallway, just like just like blocking shots and not even looking at him, just like, oh, what's going on? So you're saying I can dodge bullets? What I'm saying is that when the time comes, you won't even have to. Right. Lots of guns. <laughs> but it's, 
it's an interesting episode to to kind of watch and and we have we have this moment where Windblade makes this comment to him saying that you know you you have killed like essentially asserting that you have killed so many people yeah. and that you have caused the destruction of these planets and that the reason that you're an ex like that's the reason you're an exile prime is that you have screwed this up and he I, I liked I, I liked what he has because again we've talked about this in terms of Autobots and their their direction and their goal and he said yes I am a veteran of war but the Autobots fought for freedom and we never killed for spite or without provocation yeah. and that's just that's a, a such a simple easy way to sum up the the view and the focus of all Autobots. Yeah. You know, and, and everything that he's fought so hard for in just like one little log line to just be like, bam. And the worst thing is that with all that, there's this kind of through line with Optimus that like that was his stance the entire time. But in his mind, it ultimately amounted to nothing because he's now right. watching this like peace accord that they've, they've reached, you know, 40 years later is just falling apart and they're all falling back to war again. He's just like, wow, right. I, can't, I can't do this again. I'm done with this. There's nothing more I can do. I spent my entire life doing this and I know nothing other than war. And I just can't do it. So he was kind of in exile for that reason. But the interesting thing is that remember when Computron in the first episode was like sending that message to him? Yeah. He's been tracking her through like video, basically, whatever. It's, it's basically just like a way to say like he didn't just show up there. He's been tracking her and following her. Right. Because he knew something wasn't quite right. So now they clash. They have a couple good clashes. Optimus does get his like sweet battle axe back out. What do you got? That's what I was going okay, for. Cool. That's what I was going yeah. for. You know, you know that Optimus is at the breaking point <laughs> when all of a sudden Hand Axe comes out. When his when hand, hand disappears and a glowing ball of like orange light comes up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you in trouble, girl. When, when suddenly he feels that like, hey, look, I'm trying to be kind. I'm trying not to destroy you right, <laughs> right. now. Please give me the respect as an exiled leader that I maybe don't deserve, but just hear me out on this. And she's unrelenting right. in her, her attacks towards him. He's like, fuck this, had enough, arm axe. Yeah, arm axe. Like, and guess bam. what, bitch? It's a tat. Your sword isn't going to go flying to the side when I knock it out of your hands, but this yep. thing is a tat to my club hand. So he obviously and, and eventually gets, like, the upper hand, upper axe, whatever. And he basically just says, like, return to your home world and help your people, right? And, 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 and yeah, but the, the additional line that he has on, because uh-huh. you're right in that summary, Dave, yeah. but the line that he literally has is he goes, I've seen war. Mm. I'll spare you that experience. Right. And you're like, oh, uh, fuck, what a noble dude. What a noble Hasbro. my axe in your face. <laughs> but, you know, at this point, Windblade is like, look, I'm not here to destroy the council. I'm not here to break up this peace accord right. with, that we have. I'm here to destroy the enigma. Like, I'm here to destroy this enigma. I'm here to get it off the face of the planet. And Optimus is like, I don't, I don't think I don't think you can. Well, he was even and like he, at first he was like I didn't know they had that. That's not great. Yeah, like that's not a thing that they and should so, have. So he's surprised, yeah. you know. So we have this sudden moment of realization where he's like, "Ooh, this might be a little bit more of a sticky situation than I had originally anticipated." And then because he knows he knows about this thing as one of the primes or a prime, right. at least he knows that he's like, "I don't even know if we can destroy it. We don't have the firepower." Yeah, because. We don't even have the firepower it would take. Yeah. And then it's just blackout. Doesn't, like, doesn't he say, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, no, in that moment, you're just like, I wonder who would have that firepower. Uh, hmm. Doesn't he say that there's only one person who can help us or something like that? Yeah. Like, there's only one person who can help us. And I was like, oh, shit. So Ooh, that's when I was super excited for the next episode. And honestly, this, is my, this is my favorite episode. This is my favorite episode. The last one was your favorite. Let's get into it. Get this into it. No, I mean, I, I, I've liked all of them so far, but this get was into so it. This so great because we finally got like this clash of personalities, but also like the return of like a super strong performance of this particular character. Yeah. So this one opens up with just like this weird, like dusty, dirt filled gladiatorial arena on some like abandoned planet. You're just like, what the fuck? Where are we now? You have no clue where you are. And there's just like construction vehicles flying through and then just getting like flipped and punched to the side and you're just like oh shit somebody's fighting constructicons and then it's revealed that it's basically like this gladiator battle between megatron and all of the individual uh of devastators constructicons and he's winning he's doing real good till he gets like stabbed in the back with like this eight foot long like <laughs> sharpened pipe it just gets literally stabbed in the back but just like knocks knocks people off and just pulls the thing out and it's just like it's totally a badass introduction it's amazing. I'm like, 
Megatron is basically a gladiator for no apparent reason, and I love it. And it was great. And he basically is like, he wins the day, and he's like, is there no one else who can offer me a challenge? And of course, badass Optimus Prime has to walk through the gate. Gotta walk through that gate. Yeah. And it was a great moment. It was a great moment because we've seen it happen so many times, but this is just like another kind of like, another version of that. And you didn't expect it. Like, I didn't expect it at all. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Because the last time we saw these guys, Megatron was at the barrel of Optimus's gun, but you don't know what happened. Right. So clearly he didn't pull that trigger, which is something that comes up in the the conversation between the two of them. What did you think about the meeting of these two guys again? I thought the meeting was great. Primarily because there are just a lot of insults that are slung back and forth. And he's and Megatron it is, is so good in this, by the way. His attitude oh, is fantastic. God. It's great because he, he really is in that position where, look, they've been exiled for 40 years. He just wants to continue to battle stuff. Oh, out. yeah. He's supposed like, to fight. He found, and he says, he's just like, look, I found peace in war. Yep. Like, in these battles is where I found myself and where I found peace. And freedom. And he's, freedom he, in his exile, yeah. as he and calls he's, it. Yeah. And he's like, Look, I think you had. I think you had the same thing, you know. And we get uh, Megatron, his introduction to Windblade, yeah. and he he knows her, I guess, by reputation because he he sen- he says like, "Oh, you're the speaker who became the killer," right. and he's just like, he, he he urges her to keep it up, and she's like, "Whatever, you're an old relic." He's like, "No, keep up the killing." Yeah, his his exact. And she's line, like, Ooh. "I meant to keep up the killing, not the speaking. It doesn't suit you." <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. It's like, yeah. Keep killing. I like it. But you know, we get a we get Windblade or uh, we get Windblade who's calling them both an old relic, yeah. and that they should really just get the hell out it's of there. It's basically but... just like two old men on opposite porches that just come into the middle of the street and start like throwing like haymakers at each other. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's it's grumpy old yeah. men, but with, with Optimus Prime guests. and Megatron. Yeah. Yes. I want to see that movie. <sighs> by the way, I want to see it now too. Tommy Lee Jones. But versus Clint Eastwood with Robot Fist. We, we really real do. Speaking of, speaking of Real Steel 2 yeah. and Robot Fist, we get these cutaway scenes where they have both Megatron and Optimus kind of squaring off in a traditional like, boxer stance. I love Megatron's stance. doing like the, yeah. The and, and, they, and, and they are literally, they just look like rock'em sock'em robots <laughs> just going back and forth <laughs> at each other. And I was like, what is going on? It's very, it's very That's humorous. fun because they just throw each other all over the arena. And like you think like Megatron like knocks out Optimus and then Optimus comes out of nowhere and like drop kicks him. And it's just, it's a fun fight to watch go back and forth. And eventually right. like Windblade does step in and just be like, all right, both of you idiots, like you need to knock this off. Do you remember what she does to Megatron as by way of yeah, introduction? Yeah, she, she walks up to the side of him and just punches him right in the face. Sucker punches him, knocks she just him flat. Punch, sucker punches him in the but face. But the best part was what he did after that, because he just like leans up and is just like, I like her. Like, yeah. <laughs> wasn't phased by it, and he likes this. It's fantastic. They have this conversation where, you know, they're saying that they have this, the enigma, that they have the enigma, who, the council has, has it. it. Council, right. council has it. And so... This is the best line that Megatron has in the entire episode. I think you're right. The more I get excited about this episode, good, th- good. This, clearly, this clearly is the one that sold me, is that Megatron goes, if there's one thing I hate more, it's that idiot star scream. And he's like, I'm on board. I'm and, that's like, and that's it. Yeah. That's like his like, Ocean's Eleven moment where he's like, yeah, I'll do the job. He's, like, he's talking yeah. to Optimus. He's like, you, you I hate with all my heart, Prime. <laughs> But if there's one thing I hate more, it's that idiot star scream. It's such a great line, and just like he's having fun, man. You can tell Megatron's finally having fun. He's not in charge of all these idiot Decepticons that fight amongst themselves. He's just a badass dude fighting monsters, living in exile, wants to watch the world burn. He's good to go. Now, you bring up the point about how he's having fun. The line that he closes out with all of this, you can tell that he's continually having yeah, fun. You got. It. Because he looks at, he looks, Megatron looks at Optimus as they're walking away from this, like, destroyed Colosseum, yeah. where, where they mention the Enigma, I should, we also have to point out the fact that all of the Destructicons that are, like, blown across this entire arena, right. they kind of start blinking whenever they hear Enigma as and well. And that's an important point, uh, important point, because they're trying to keep this kind of quiet, because if all the Combiners find out about this Enigma of Combination, right. they want to get their hands on it, whatever side they're right. on. Right. So we, uh, 
we have this moment where they, they've had this final discussion. They're walking away from this blown up Colosseum. And, and Megatron just looks at Optimus and he goes, what was that thing that you used to say all the time? Transform and roll out. And it's just like, it's just chiding him oh, and yeah. poking fun. It's- sticking them just robot ribbing them right. the entire time and it's just like come on jackass are we gonna <laughs> say the fucking thing idiot <laughs> say the thing you always say before you kick my team's ass <laughs> but it's great because they're now on they... like a road trip together which is cool and right. megatron doesn't transform into a stupid fucking gun this time what does yes, he turn into I instead love this. this is the best he turns into a big fucking tank. <laughs> tank come on man guys it was great God. I really want to see what they do next. Unfortunately, that's the end of the current episodes that are available. So by the time you guys listen to this particular episode, there may be like one more up by the time you listen to it, if you listen to it later in the week. But uh, possibly right now, that's where we're at. So yeah. we've got three more episodes left. We'll find out what happens. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold my opinion yet. But Sean, what do you got? I actually, I, like, I, I want to say, yeah. I think you're right. This fourth episode, really, because you know what? This is like... This is like the, the buddy comedy where like you need to assemble your crew. Yeah. This, this really is sort of like an Ocean's Eleven moment where they're just like, we got, we got everybody together, guys. Yeah. Let's go rob another bank. Right, and, like, and as, they're, as they are driving off like into the sunset, you're just like, oh, these next episodes are going to have a lot of shit going it's gonna on. It's going to have like, to. Everything I mean. that's, yeah, everything that's happened. Again, there's, there's literally no fat that they can add for this. We've got 15 more <laughs> minutes to this show. To wrap it up. And so it can't be another just solid minute of space punching. So things are going to, I feel like things are going to get insane. They've, they've got to bring. Or it's going to be something yeah. where they gear this up for a cliffhanger it's, I, to launch into a season I two. I feel like that's where it's going, but I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I know they have to bring like Victorian in at some point. Um, right. So now the combiners probably know that the Enigma of Combination is at on Cybertron with the council and everybody's kind of heading there. So Hopefully it'll just kind of like everything will focus there and we'll see what happens next. But uh, yeah. do you recommend this uh, or do you give it the dip? You know what? Uh, this absolutely does not get okay. the dip and I definitely recommend Very it. Very cool. This, this felt like something that was more nostalgic than even some of the Generation 1 Transformers stuff that we watched okay. because this, this story felt uh, very interesting. It, it, it's... You know, we, we've gotten to that point where, you know, we understand all of this backstory now after this entire month. This felt like a fun and sort of refreshing kickstart to, to everything that's been built up to this point, you know, notwithstanding, uh, you know, all the primate robots that we've had in the past. <laughs> we don't need to. We can, we can overlook no, we those can and just move that. on. Yeah. And so this, this was an interesting take, uh, you know, on, on everything. And it's great to kind of see that, you know, the, the fragile alliance that has, has lasted these 40 years and the fact that these two main players that are in the game are in exile and see how kind of they're coming back to, you know, to try to foster that peace, to try to bring that back together. Whether it's through, you know, their, their, their obligation that they have to the rest of the, the robots that are on Cybertron or whether it's you're simply just your hate of Starscream. Yeah. Like, these are all great motivating sure. factors to have. I'm actually waiting so, for like a double cross from Megatron too with the next couple ooh. episodes. I'm waiting for him to get his hands on it somehow and stick on hit the fan, the robot fan. But, that makes sense. I, I, would, I could definitely see that coming. But it's cool. I'm, like, I'm, I'm like excited to see what happens in the next three episodes, the next 15 minutes, which is not, I mean, man, on a lot of these, these cartoons that we cover, I'm not like, I rarely use the word excited to see what happens next. It's usually like, Ugh, if I have time, maybe I'll check out another episode. But no, I mean, I definitely recommend checking this one out. It's cool because we're in the middle of it. So you can literally just get caught up super quick, either with our show. You can watch it at the same time, whatever you want to do. Um, but it's super quick, guys. Five minutes each. Check it out. Uh, odd enough, uh, the way that Dave and I structured this episode is that if you sync up our show with the episodes with Dark Side of the Moon and just play them all concurrent, head explodes. boom, head explodes. Yeah, it literally explodes. <laughs> so don't do that. It actually, it turns into a headmaster. Head? Oh. It just... And just rolls it just off. Just explodes. It crushes the, it crushes your <laughs> feeble human body with the weight of its robot head. We apologize in advance. Sorry, not sorry. Speaking of head on, uh, uh, before we get to our uh, contact information tonight, we do have uh, a little shout out to a, a commenter on our Facebook page. This one goes out to Christopher uh, Germanata. Hope I'm saying your name right, Christopher Germanata. Had a funny comment on our um, 
which one was this headmasters headmasters episode of course yeah, it was yeah. of course it was the headmasters he had a funny comment uh made us laugh so we wanted to read it here so if you guys were listening to that episode or actually watch that series you know that they just say hit on all the time so christopher had a funny line he says hit on apply directly to the fort gets devoured by unicron i just love the fact that it's like <laughs> those old irritating commercials it was, it was a product called Head On, applied directly to the forehead, and they just said it over and over again 50 fucking times. So luckily... It was like an, a, it was like an aspirin pain reliever. Yeah, that you, you just rub on your face directly like to a the glue spot. stick, like an insane person. Ah. And luckily, Christopher is not an insane person and made fun of it and related it back to Transformers. So good job. Uh, made us laugh. Way to go, Chris Geminata. All right. Uh, hey, everybody. We wanted to try something new. Uh, we asked everybody over our different social media platforms a very important question, and we felt that this was an important question because we've been, we personally, Dave and I, have been looking at this uh, for the last five weeks, and so we wanted to know from you specifically, who is your favorite Transformer and why? And so we've got some great responses that we're going to read from our Facebook account, our Instagram, and also Twitter. And so, Dave, take it away with our Facebook. Yeah, so our first ever question of the week. First response comes from Facebook from Todd Phillips. He says, I'd have to say Transformers Cybertron Optimus Prime because at the time he was the most powerful version of Optimus Prime. That was pretty cool. I went and looked him up and this guy is pretty crazy. Not Todd. Todd seems pretty cool. Optimus from uh, Cybertron is pretty nuts. He's got just like a ton of guns. He's loaded the bear. Also from Facebook, we've got Richard Jordan Mendoza, who says Transformers Fall of Cybertron Metroplex, which I kind of have to agree with him. Metroplex is pretty badass. That was actually, I think that was the game that you and I played, was it not? Uh, it was a, a Fall of Cybertron, Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Uh, there's a lot of Metroplex in the background. Oh, a lot of, of Metroplex, yeah. 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 So that's that. So that's our Facebook page. Thank you guys so much for responding to that. We do appreciate it. Okay. Over on Instagram, we have Uncle Podcast says, really like Starscream. He's a good, bad example for kids showing what the lust for power will get you. Nothing. Couldn't agree with you more about Love and Starscream, Uncle Podcast. Thank you, man. All right, we'll jump over to Twitter. We've got uh, Evan Valentine, friend of the show, former guest. I'm sure we'll have him back again. Uh, worst says, human being. What'd you say? I said worst human being. Don't listen to him, Evan. We all love <laughs> you here at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Evan says, damn, it's, it's really hard to choose between Starscream and Dinobot. Now, we had to clarify with Evan whether he meant all the Dinobots are just Dinobots from uh, from Beast Wars. So it was definitely right. the Dinobot from Beast Wars. Uh, that was uh, that was his pick. He also yelled Maximize at us, so that was. <laughs> Dave the Half Herd on Twitter says, "Over many in- incarnations, I guess I'd have to say Ratchet, consistently great." Okay, and our last one on Twitter from Priscilla Cullen. She says, "I have to say Bumblebee. I just have a soft spot for the dude." So we followed up with Priscilla to ask if she had like a specific you know, show that Bumblebee was in, because he's been in from the original series all the way up through, obviously, current day. So her take is Robots in Disguise. I don't know if it was a 2001 or 2015 version. Probably 2015, because I think that one focuses on his story more. She also says, uh, regarding Bumblebee, but I also think he made the movies. Without them, they would have been worse. (laughs) So (laughs) we'll have to agree. We'll have to agree on that one. I think a lot of people love Bumblebee, um, mostly not mostly but especially because of those movies where he's fantastic so thank you guys so much for answering our question of the week we, we will have a new one up on our facebook and twitter account so keep an eye out for that one and we'll uh, read your responses on an upcoming episode thanks again all right sean buddy anything else for uh transformers combiner wars before we wrap it up for this week and this month no nah, man i share the same sentiment that you have i'm excited to see what they do in the next 15 minutes <laughs> it sounds like it's literally just the next 15 <laughs> minutes of this conversation um <laughs> But over the next 15 minutes and next couple of weeks, what do you have coming up in the D.C. area? Oh, man, as always, I do live improv comedy in D.C. You can check this out at witdc.org. Also, I am a producer for an improv festival that is in D.C. that is going to be happening in November. That is November 9th to the 13th. And you can check out more information about that, districtimprov.org. A lot of .orgs going around. Mm. Uh, you guys can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sean Paul Ellis. Fantastic. Dave, what's up with you? Same old shit. You can find my shenanigans over at <laughs> collider.com, nerdist.com slash category slash science or davetrumbor.com where I will not be uh, recommending any short stories at the moment because I can't remember any of their titles. So <laughs> <laughs> you can check that stuff out over there. If you're interested in finding out more about Saturday Morning Cartoons, you can do so at our website, saturdaymorningcartoons.com. Remember morning with a u you can also find us on twitter at morning tunes 
check out Sean's handiwork on our Instagram page, which he has referenced a couple times this episode. Really funny stuff over there. We've got, what was it, Women Something Wednesdays? Yeah, I've been taking advantage of uh, different things like Throwback Thursday, Women Crush Women Wednesdays, Crush and uh, obviously it's, we're talking Transformers all month, so uh, Tuesday is Transformation <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> nice, it's very zen of you. <laughs> very robot zen. Is there a robot Buddha? I'm sure one of those primes has to be a robot. Sure, Buddha. there has to be a robot. Has Buddha. To be. Let us know on our Facebook page. Uh, we love the fact that you guys are commenting and having a lot of fun over there. We're having a lot of fun reading your comments, so keep it up. You can also check us out on our YouTube account. You can listen to our free audio podcast each and every week through iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, whatever floats your boat. If you have a suggestion for a future episode or just want to drop us a line, you can do so at SaturdayMorningCartoons at gmail.com. That's going to wrap it up for us. Going to wrap it up for Transformers. Wrap it up for August. We're moving into September. We've got a mighty start to the September. What are we going to be talking about next Ooh. month? Ooh, next week we have a uh, special guest, Melanie Harker, coming Ooh. on to talk Mighty Mouse with Mighty us. Mighty Mouse. Yes. So we're we'll getting into the Mighty Mouse Playhouse. Is that, is that a thing? Yeah. That's the name of the thing? There was like a show. There was, a, the, like, there was a, an anthology series um, that had a bunch of like short, series that aired on cbs and so interesting i feel uh, like mighty mouse playhouse next time on saturday morning cartoons i feel like as far as the like superheroes go this would be the one that like i'd feel most comfortable looking like because if i remember correctly it was just like a really like inflated upper body like, he didn't have any definition he was just kind of like an inflated torso right. right i'm down with that because i don't yeah i think it would be really creepy if you drew a mouse like with abs yeah yeah, I think that's just a weird thing to, to realize. Well, we're going to leave you listeners with that mental image. And until next time. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. Thanks for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. <laughs> Take care. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform and roll out.